when I was older, I always had two or three full stop machines, and my daddy brought me my money every week. I thought everybody's dad bought daddy came by and brought him their money in a sack. I, I didn't think that was different at all. People would come in evening gowns and suits to Sam's nightclubs. The biggest and most famous, the Grove. The club first operated in Houston. But soon, the notoriously incorruptible Texas Rangers just got too tough. We are just a very good police force. And, uh, and as I say, I don't think that they were into the bribery business, and so we, we couldn't bribe them, so we had to leave. So the club reopened in Louisiana. We had hundreds of people, thousands. In fact, we put crap tables outside, and one crap table was sinking down in that old Louisiana mud, and this man said, I never have won any money here. Now you got to throw these dice uphill. <laughs> the Depression led to other unlikely candidates becoming gamblers, like Illinois farmer Jim Morris, who ended up running a poker game in Decatur, Illinois, and supported his family with his percentage of the pot. His son tells the story. That was his living. Yeah, when he blowed the farm in 29. Right after the bank got through with us, he had $8 left because they sold all the livestock and everything. And uh, he never worked a day after that. He played cards from up until the time he passed away. I graduated high school in 32, and of course there were no jobs there or anywhere else. And so I went to work for this guy in Decatur, and he took a liking to me and taught me what little I know about the business over the years. It was common practice in many states for gambling clubs to close down during the time when the grand jury was in session. We closed three times a year during the grand jury for 10 days. And then when the grand jury was out, we reopened and went right back to work every day. Myself and two or three other dealers, we'd go to another town that was still open, Springfield, Peoria, East St. Louis, Chicago, or wherever, and work until Decatur got back open. Much later, in Las Vegas, Morris would open the very first dealing school in the country and become part owner of the Union Plaza. Sam Smith, on the other hand, preferred to stay in his home state of Texas but his cousin and partner later helped him open the Sands Resort in Las Vegas. I came here in 1939, and I told my father it was the place to come. However, he rented a car in LA and broke down in the middle of this desert. And he said nobody would ever come to this desert. Gambling still wasn't legal anywhere except in Nevada, but it was considered open in some places. A minority of people frowned on it, but the majority welcomed it because it was good for the merchants. I worked for the war in Decatur, Springfield, Peoria, East St. Louis, wherever gambling was open. Another town that was hopping with gamblers and gambling was Butte, Montana. Wide open. It's wide open in Butte. Of course, it was not legal. In Butte, Montana, you're aware of gambling from the time that you can walk to where you get outside. There was gambling every place in Butte in those days. As a kid, Howard made a good living selling newspapers to people in the gambling joints. And because Butte was a mining town full of men with money to spend, it was a throwback to the Wild West Gold Rush days with plenty of fresh fodder for the tables and slots. They had a, quite a racket, you know. A miner got off work, came down and walked into the joint with the bucket under his arm. He'd sit down, get a shot and a beer for free. The first one. <laughs> the joints catered to the working class. Nothing fancy. Pretty much if you didn't work in the mines, you worked in the gambling houses. Nobody batted an eye. Why? Pay off. They paid off the powers to be. The sheriff, the policeman walking up and down the street that was his corner or his beat or something, they all got a little something. Nobody bothered them. It is one of the common threads in the nationwide tapestry of illegal gambling towns. In Detroit, uh, it was always sneak. Everything was, a, uh, it was illegal. Of course, everybody there, I guess, had their hands out. The politicians, as the politicians of today, they, nothing's ever changed. 
and uh, they uh, for so much money you could you could operate providing you were with the right people I think the payoffs went down the line I think the top person got it and took care of whoever he had to take care of.